everybody, and welcome to week one of our Trustworthy Online Bible Study. My name is Kendra Schwarz, and I am the manager of Online Bible Studies, and I am joined by two people. One is the author of Trustworthy, Lisa Turkers. Hi, everybody. And the other is someone who you may not have met before. His name is Joel Mutamale and he's the Director of Theology at Proverbs 31 Ministries. How's it going? And we are so excited to have you in these videos. You did such a good job with my last name. Dude, I was Kendra. really nervous about it. I'm wow. dead serious. I was like, they're probably gonna That's get a cut. plus. Thank you so much. I like your last name, by the way. Thank you. Thank <laughs> it you. It's very fun. fun to say. It just rolls yeah. off the tongue. Mutamale. Yeah. It's you quite fun. You can do fun. Italian if you want to. Oh. Mutamale. <laughs> Ooh, look at that, there everybody. We go. <laughs> How fun is that? But I am Indian, but we can do Italian Indian. I'm words. Italian. <laughs> Honestly, what a duo, what for a real. Duo. Yeah. Um, so Joel's the director of theology, and he worked very closely with you, Lisa, going over content. He was with you in Israel when you formed, when you filmed the teaching videos, right? Mm -hmm. So you do a lot with Proverbs. And so Joel, just really quickly, what's the favorite part of your job? Oh gosh, that's such a good question. So I have a serious one and then kind of a serious one. Oh, okay. Is that, yeah. A serious no, one and, and, and a, a kind one. of a serious one. So okay. let's go with the uh, kind of serious one. One of my favorite things uh, working in a women's ministry as a guy is when all the gals are like, hey, what do you think about my nails? Or what about oh. the new hair? And I'm like, yeah, I feel so invited into this conversation yeah, we do right like now. To include you. But Lisa that's wrote true. a great book called Uninvited. And so I just need to go back to that. No. Um, but I do learn all kinds of things about the different colors and shades. I didn't Ooh. know that there were different shades of pink and orange. All, the, all that. That's very good. But my favorite legitimate part of my job are study days. Mm -hmm. Theological study days. We have time that we set aside um, to dig into scripture and to unpack word by word, context by context, history, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, all of it. And those are by far the highlights of my week. That's awesome. You guys seem like you have a lot of study days for Trustworthy. There's a lot Ooh. of content in this study, but it's a lot of good content, a lot of fun questions that you can reflect on. Um, we'll get into exactly what's in here in a bit, but Lisa, why did you write Trustworthy? Well, I think there were several things. Yeah. Number one, I've always been fascinated by David in the Bible. Mm -hmm. He's one of the people in the Bible that I think I relate to on a pretty deep level. And we get to know a lot about David, not just what he did, but how he felt. Mm -hmm. David had uh, a very expressive way of letting us know that he was very human. He had emotions. He was a man that made mistakes. Mm -hmm. And yet there's something about him that God called him a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I like being able to wrestle through my own feelings, be aware of my own imperfections and still believe that I could be deemed a woman after God's own heart. So because I was interested in David, mm -hmm. that got me very interested in his son, Solomon. And mm -hmm. so I'll be honest when I said, oh, I'd love to do a study on first and second Kings. Somehow in my brain, I thought we were pretty much going to be studying Saul, David, Solomon. Right. Oh. And I thought, I've got this, <laughs> yeah, right? Easy. But it's probably because I never studied First and Second Kings before. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize when we signed up for this project that it also <laughs> meant studying First and Second Samuel, <laughs> First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. Chronicles. So it was really a study of six wow. books of the Bible. And so... I'll be honest, I was very intimidated by this material, but I think it's good yeah. that I felt that way because I think that I can bring to the table the appropriate amount of awareness mm -hmm. that there are concepts here that can be at times seemingly complicated, yeah. but that's one of the things that I like to do in my Bible teaching is take big concepts of the Bible and even complicated concepts of the Bible and make them easier to understand. Yeah. It's not at all that I simplify them. It's just that I like to present them with clarity mm -hmm. and with a way of connection so that we know why this even matters. Why does it matter that we study ancient kings? Mm -hmm. And I think I said in the introduction, I'm not a king. I'll never be a king. Not. <laughs> I'm not ancient. Right. I might be old, but I'm not ancient. <laughs> I love that, yeah. Right? That's good. And um, I'll never lead a country. Yeah. And, and so, you know, at first it almost seems like, why is this even important to yeah. study? But I think we have to remember that there are common dynamics 
in our humanity that make these kings very interesting to study because beyond their title, beyond their time frame, yeah. they had certain tendencies mm. that I relate to. Yeah. And probably the biggest of those is that it's easy for me to say with my mouth, I trust God. Mm. Yeah. But when put in situations where there's confusion, mm. where there's hardship, where I can't see what's ahead of me, where there's threats, mm -hmm. where there's yeah. uncertainty, where there's um, emotion involved, where there's fear mm -hmm. involved, put in those kind of situations, I am much more likely to want to tame God than trust Him. Yeah. And therein lies the reason I think it's important for mm -hmm. us to study First and Second Kings and really unearth the places inside of our own heart where distrust exist and i'll be honest as we started getting into studying this um, i discovered that i definitely have places of distrust in my heart mm -hmm. and it's not that i i, I don't want to put that on display yeah um, but i do think it's so good that we find where are those tendencies inside of us that um, that can be addressed so that we can learn to trust God on deeper levels. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean today, mm -hmm. trusting God on deeper levels, because I think God sees what's coming mm -hmm. in our life, and that's not something to fear. Right. It can be good stuff yeah. and hard stuff, right? But God wants to prepare us. And so it's no mistake, I truly believe out of all the people in the universe, God has gathered together you and me and us mm. for such a time as this mm. to study this because God sees we need it. I love that. And you mentioned the word relatable and how you take each of the kings and you, you give lessons that they may have walked through and lessons that we can take as well. And so that's how these videos are going to be set up for us. We're going to go ahead and take a look at each of the kings um, for each week of study. And we're going to ask you both what are some lessons that we're going to learn from them this week and then how are they relatable to us. So to kick things off, week one, we're going to look at three kings, which you mentioned. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at David, Solomon, and Saul. Mm -hmm. And so my question is, how are, what are the major lessons that we learn from them, and how is it relatable to us? Well, I'll jump right in yep. and say, first of all, I think uh, what's going to be really important that we think about this week is yeah. that the nation of Israel was always supposed to be you call it a fancy term, theocracy. theocracy. Yep. <laughs> there we yeah, go, everybody. See, I'm learning, Joel. <laughs> um, so that means that God was to be their leader. God mm -hmm. was to be their king. Mm -hmm. But the children of Israel looked around, and they saw other nations. And um, these other nations had human kings. These other nations had human kings that at times seemed to be doing really well. Right. And so they looked around and said, no, we want a human king. And God warned them, this is what a human king will do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the people said, either I think we know more than God, mm -hmm. so we still want a human king, or that's okay, it's worth the trade. Because yeah. I would rather have short-term comfort mm -hmm. of being able to see a king sitting on the throne, yeah. Yeah. doling out strategy. Yeah. Um, I would rather have that yeah. than whatever long-term benefit it is in just keeping God as yeah. our king. Yeah. And so when the first king was chosen, he looked like a king, he was tall like a king, he was strong, strong like a king, mm -hmm. um, and he looked like everything that in our human estimation should have been successful, and um, he was not. Mm. He was not successful, and I, I think part of that, a big part of that was, um, for me, a personal lesson that there is the physical that we see. Yeah. And as humans, we always have to remind ourselves just because what we see looks good, yeah. if it doesn't line up with mm -hmm. what God's saying, no matter how good it looks, um, and no matter, no matter how good it appears, even at first, mm -hmm. um, it is worth paying attention to what God says because there's the physical reality and there's the spiritual reality yeah. and in the spiritual reality God always knows best mm -hmm. and so I think God saw something um, that happened in Saul's heart that really caused um, quite a disruption in yeah. the expectations of people. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's so good. I think you, you nailed it, Lisa, where one of the things that I'm really excited about in the study is understanding how deceitful the idea of something tangible is and the security mm -hmm. that a tangible reality could potentially present to us. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the common story of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. The common story is that God had been so faithful to them, um, yet God wasn't tangibly always physically, even though we have the pillar of fire and that kind of stuff. But they looked around and they saw different people, different nations. They looked to their right, they looked to their left, and the object of their trust was always supposed to be God himself. Yeah. Yet what happens when we think, maybe this one tangible thing can give me that trust that I so desperately long for because I can grab hold right. of it with it's my so hands. Easy to do. Uh, and I'm excited about how we will see that play out in the lives of Saul, how we'll see that definitely play out in the life of David, and even in Solomon, his son. And so we will walk through three kings <laughs> that are very unique, have some commonality, but also very distinct. So good. Yeah, and I would say one of my personal lessons that um, that I kind of sit with quite often mm -hmm. when looking at these three kings um, is when David was chosen to be the king, he didn't immediately sit on the throne. Mm. And um, he was actually chosen by the prophet Samuel, really chosen by God, but identified by the prophet Samuel. But when Jesse the father brought all of the sons in mm -hmm. to be considered uh, because Samuel said, from one of your sons is going to be the next king after Saul was now no longer going to have the blessing of being king. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jesse didn't even think enough about his son David to bring him in the field. Wow. Right. And so Samuel looks at all of the sons and, um, and says, none of these, so do you have another son? And Jesse, the father, almost seems like, well, yeah, you know, there's this other <laughs> son. Of. I mean, he's out in the field. <laughs> you right. know? But you and don't I can him. almost <laughs> imagine... Jesse saying, yeah, but he doesn't look like a king. He doesn't wow, act like yeah. a king. He doesn't smell like a king. Mm. And so finally when David's brought in, though, he is king. But then he has to go back into the fields of everyday life. Yep. And so he's got the oil of anointing mm. dripping down his head. Yeah. And the expectations that must have welled up in David, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to go oh, to the yeah. equivalent of Harvard Business School now, or I'm right. going to tomorrow be He's one of the wealthiest men. And no, no, he goes to this long season of preparation. And that preparation was crucial mm. yeah. because I think it was that season of waiting yeah. and that season of learning and that season of character development that prepared him to become a king that God then eventually would say, you are a man wow. after my own heart, not perfect, yeah. but there's something about your heart mm. that is true and good. And I think it's the character development. So I really glean a lot from yeah. David and his example, sitting between two other kings that we definitely see issues on the heart level. Yeah, that's good. I know the season of waiting is something I can relate to and I'm excited to dig into it more for week one. So everyone, we hope that you are excited as well to study week one of Trustworthy. We can't wait to join you at the beginning of every week to unpack a little bit about the kings that we will be focusing on. And we have a little saying around here at Proverbs 31 Ministries because we believe it to be true. It's when you know the truth and live, live the, the truth, truth it, it changes, changes everything. everything. Nice job, everyone. We'll see you next week for week two. Thank you.